Okay, so you have your ADLM. Awesome. You just bought that, or you just got it in the uh, got it in the mail. Great. Uh, I'm gonna set you up with how to actually uh, get started with this thing. So for starters, uh, let me. I just want to introduce my setup real quick. So what you're seeing in front of me, I'm recording a, a face forward, so you can actually see me uh, interacting and things like that. Uh, we also have a top-down camera. You can see that here. I have a top-down camera, so you can see me moving around with this thing and uh, you know plugging things into the board and pointing at certain cables and things like that. Uh, I also have the laptop in front of me that's going to have Scopy running at the same time. So, all of that in mind, uh, introduction to how this setup's going to work, let's talk about this thing. So, I have my ADLM over here plugged in. Uh, not plugged in yet, actually. I lied. I'm going to plug it into the computer just so you can see what's going on. So on my laptop here uh, is the Scopy interface. Now I've already downloaded the drivers and I've already downloaded Scopy, clearly. Uh, you have to do both of those before you actually attempt to connect to your ADALM2000. Once you've done that, you can just simply take a USB cable, uh, plug it in, and hopefully within a couple seconds here, uh, it'll automatically detect it. The ADALM itself will begin to start glowing blue, saying, hey, I have power uh, with an LED status if you really want that. And look at that. Pops right up on the uh, Scopy. I go ahead and click it, and it does some discovery. It gives you things like the, uh, the ID of the thing, the manufacturing ID, any firmware versions, things like that. Uh, it also will tell you what's available on the side, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit Connect. It'll run through a quick calibration process, and then once it's done, uh, what it'll do is say OK. You're ready to go. You now have access to everything, uh, all the instruments inside of this device. So for starters, uh, let's do some basic introduction here. Let's do some of the most basic functionality that you would ever need, uh, which is a power supply and a voltmeter. So power supply and voltmeter. Let's start with the power supply. So this is the interface for the power supply. Uh, you have a bipolar supply here. You have independent plus and minus voltages. Something that I need to make very, very clear. Note that on the uh, ADALM itself, let me grab my little pointer here. On the ADALM itself, you'll see that there's a V plus and a V minus, but there's no like, or not even V plus, V minus. You'll see V plus, V minus, but you might be, the first guess might be, oh, let me just say that that's my voltage source, so that's my voltage supply, and the answer is no, it's not. Uh, what it is, is that is the positive rail in reference to common ground and a negative rail in reference to common ground. Common ground are these black cables indicated by this uh, symbol here, the, the common reference grounding symbol that you all use in your circuit analysis. These black cables are exactly that. They are reference grounds. So how do we end up working with that? So here's what we're going to do is I want to supply my little circuit here. So over here, I have my little resistor divider network, and I want to see what a voltage divider is and how it works. So I need to determine what I want to power this thing with. Uh, so for example, I'd like to power it with, uh, let's say, 3.3 volts. And then I hit enter. And you'll see it actually sets the voltage here. What I want to use, though, or what I want to point out is... Um, this device doesn't have an infinite power supply. And in fact, one of the things that's different between a USB-based device and something like on a lab bench is not only the power delivery, but also the safety precautions that are built into the machine. Uh, we'd like to think that our power supplies uh, in the instrumentation labs are kind of student-proof. Um, you can do some pretty gnarly things with them and they'll still work fine. Uh, at the end of the day, something that you need to remember, this is plugged into your computer. Um, USB 3.0 can supply up to 900 milliamps, so uh, just be careful with things before you set them. Don't try to dead short things together. Um, be sure that of your connections before you actually hit enable. So I've set my positive rail to 3.3 volts. I don't have to worry about my negative rail if I'm only supplying, you know, a positive 3.3 volts. So let me go ahead and connect that to my uh, circuit here. So let me grab a red cable. Again, I'm going to try and keep these things color-coded. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this down a little bit. So V plus is this red cable here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in. What I'm going to do is plug in a uh, jumper wire 
just so I can actually plug this end into my breadboard. So I'm going to hook it up to one of the ends of this uh, resistor chain that I care about. Next, I need to supply the reference ground. Again, this voltage source is a two-terminal device, and it's providing 3.3 volts referenced to this black reference ground cable. So take one of your black reference ground cables, plug in a jumper that comes with your parts kit, or you might have one laying around. Go ahead and place that in your circuit where it's supposed to. This is a basic divider network, so I just want it to go across both of these resistors. And you might think, well, is that it? Well, the answer is mm, yes, actually it is. Uh, so once you're ready to go and you've hooked it up and you've made an inspection and you've said, okay, there's nothing that should be dead shorted, um, anything like that, then I can go ahead and hit enable. Now, if you look at it, it's going to come up here with this little gauge that says, hey, you know, you're at 3.3 volts. That's great. And if I wanted to increase or de decrease it, uh, you can do so live. Within the uh, scopy environment, whenever you look over here to the left and you see a play button, that means that that module or that piece of instrumentation is active. So the power supply right now is on. Now, if I wanted to turn it off, I have a couple options. I could go into the power supply setting, so let's say the power supply setting, and hit disable, and it'll stop it. And you can see that the measured voltage here, this measured voltage goes down to zero. Let's say it's on and I'm, you know, maybe working with my voltmeter or my oscilloscope and I just want to turn it off. Uh, you can also just hit the button down here and it'll stop it. And if you want to resume operation, you can. So that's the power supply. Let's talk about the voltmeter. So the voltmeter here is a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting little uh, piece of kit in this thing. I really like the interface for it because not only does it give you a histogram, uh, it also lets you do dual channels. So a voltmeter is exactly what it sounds like. It's something that measures voltage. So let's say that I wanted to measure the voltage between, uh, or for my divider network, my output voltage. So these actually utilize the oscilloscope channels. The oscilloscope channels are indicated on your ADA LM as 1 plus, 1 minus, and 2 plus, 2 minus. The oscilloscope in this device is actually differential. And what that means is that it's not going to measure something in respect to ground. It is truly a differential measurement between these two pairs of wires. Uh, just as an aside, whenever you have a part of this system that's like plus, minus, the way that it's indicated is that the plus is always solid color, so you can see that this is just completely orange. The negative edge is a hybrid. It has white and the color of the positive channel. So it's supposed to be a quick, easy way to figure out which channel is what. So if I wanted to measure the voltage uh, across one of these resistors or at the output, I could just take one of my orange wires, plug it in to get a jumper. I'm going to place the positive or the positive reference where I want to measure my circuit voltage. And then I'm going to take my negative and I'm going to indicate this with a, uh, a green cable. I would normally say black because we're just going to plug it into black, but who knows? Maybe you actually want to measure in reference to something else. So my negative cable, which I'm representing with this green cable, I'm going to put with our reference ground. So overall, that's what our circuit looks like is our, our setup is we have a power supply, which are these red and black cables going across both of our uh, elements. And then I'm taking and I'm measuring with these orange and green cables the voltage across our 1K resistor. This is a voltage divider with a 2K and a, a 2.2K and a 1K resistor uh, in series. So, all right, let's, let's make some measurements, right? So if I wanted to hit, if I wanted to make some measurements, here we go. I hit start, and if you look at it, um, what you're seeing here are two different things. First off, you're getting a live reading. If I were to say adjust my power supply voltage, maybe up at 4.3 volts, uh, you would see that there's a jump. It's 1.3 volts now. Um, what you're also seeing here is a histogram. So sort of similar to like an oscilloscope in what's called roll mode, uh, what you're seeing is, an, uh, is a, uh, a histogram of voltage measurements. Uh, so that way it's actually a nice little feature. So you can see if you had like a, a potentiometer, you could turn it and you can see what happens. 
Um, there's a lot of cool stuff here. It also tells you a nice min and max, and there's a lot of other options here uh, to do that. If you don't like the history, fine. You can just uh, leave it there. Uh, turn it off, and you can also change the duration. You can have one second of history. Uh, you could have a minute's worth of history across the screen. So you have a lot of options here to uh, mess, uh, mess around with. There's also these things called like peak holding, uh, which basically says, hey, those measurements for min and max up here. You know what? Let's, uh, let's take a look at that uh, and reset it. So you can turn that off if you really don't care, if you just want to take a measurement, but it's kind of nice to know. Uh, you may notice as well when you hover over the voltmeter, the DMM screen, uh, if you look at the histogram, you might look at it and see a cross. Uh, that's just because any time that it comes up with a graph in the program, uh, it, it basically says, hey, you want to know what's going on? Great. Uh, if I were to stop it, uh, it doesn't even measure where it is. On the oscilloscope, it's actually a measuring tool. Uh, what else do we have in terms of options here? So we got data logging. So if I wanted to actually take a measurement, uh, I could say take a file and I want to browse and maybe make a new file. It's a CSV file, so I'm going to throw it in my documents folder. Uh, you may have to give it permission uh, to talk to it, but let's say this is basic resistive measurements. So let's say you wanted to measure the thermistor again, or you wanted to measure a potentiometer or something over time. Uh, you can totally set up a, a, a sampling scheme here. So if you wanted, for example, down here in the bottom corner, you could set up and say how many seconds or milliseconds or minutes or hours that you want between each one of these measurements. So if you wanted to measure temperature in your room over 30 minutes with that thermistor, you could set up a once per minute measurement of the voltmeter and measure what's going on. It's a pretty slick little tool uh, that you can use for your lab. So just to show you what this would look like, uh, I'm going to turn data logging on as soon as uh, I have everything set up. One second. I want to overwrite what's in the file, and I hit on. And now every second it's going to take a measurement, and it's going to append this to the file. So I'm going to hit off, and I'm going to browse for my uh, file. And now here's my CSV file. Uh, what does it think I want to open? I don't want to open Zoom. Uh, let me go to my documents, and sort by date modified. Thank you. There we go. And now, hopefully with any luck, when I open up my uh, the CSV file, what ends up happening is you should see all of your measurements in here. And it'll even tell you uh, what channel it was on, the timestamp. There's a lot of really good information you can get out of this DMM. So this video was meant to basically introduce to you the basics behind these two pieces of very simple instrumentation, the power supply and the voltmeter. Uh, I didn't go over how to use two channels of the voltmeter. Um, I can show you that real quickly uh, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, if you wanted to measure another point, maybe you actually wanted to measure for sanity's sake what your output voltage is. Uh, what I can do is you can do that with your second channel of your oscilloscope. So two plus, two minus, that's your second channel of your oscilloscope. I'm going to take the blue wire, which is channel two plus, plug in a jumper. And let's say I wanted to measure my waveform or my DC voltage going in. So I'll place that on the same row as my uh, source voltage. And uh, you know what? Let's just truly show the differential measurement uh, happening here. I'm going to indicate my uh, I'm going to indicate my negative side with a white wire. So if we wanted to prove to ourselves very quickly here that KVL was a thing. Uh, if I know that I'm supplying, I think I just tweaked it to 4.3 volts. Uh, if I'm getting roughly 1.3 volts across my uh, 1K resistor, that means about 3 volts should be dropping across my 2.2K uh, resistor, right? So here's what I can do. Take my uh, negative lead of my, uh, my negative lead of my oscilloscope, and I'm going to plug it across my second resistor. And what I'm doing here is I am actually measuring what you're seeing is on channel one, and here I'll even turn on the history of channel two so we can watch it. Uh, what you're seeing here is it is measuring the voltage across uh, for channel one, which is orange, typically orange and scopy, 
uh, the voltage across the 1K resistor. And in purple, you're seeing the voltage across the 2K resistor. And would you look at that? It's 3 point, or it's 4.3 volts. If I change my power supply to 5 volts or 1 volt, that should also track as well. So if I go back to the voltmeter, and you can see that jump in measurement as well. KVL works. Everything's happy. So really in this video was a quick show of this equipment and enough to get you started with actually a lot of the preliminary labs. Labs, I think, one through three. Uh, you can now do that now. When you go to stop Scopey, um, you can, again, you can hit stop in each one of the individual equipments, uh, or on this left-hand panel here, you can turn it off. If you want to come back to this for later, let's say that you're done for now, or you want to come back and save this idea of, you know, a power supply at this and, you know, your DMM, you can always save configurations in Scopey. So if I go over here to save... I can pick a location and I can say that this was a, a voltage divider setup or something. It'll save a file called a .ni or .ini file. So what I can do here is let me just uh, mess around here. Let me turn off the history and make this an AC measurement, turn this off and reset everything and uh, my power supply. Let me uh, jack that up and everything like that. So let's just say that there's a bunch of stuff happening, okay? If I go into load, you can see this voltage divider setup that I just saved. When I import it and load it, what it hopefully will do is, uh, let me make sure, double check, let me load it. What it should do is set everything to what we had previously. So before I had this drop to one volt, I jacked it up to five volts, it's set to one volt now. My voltmeter is pre-prescribed with a history. It also even knows what measurement file to use. So it basically saves a snapshot of what Scopey was set up as. So with this, I hope this has helped you out a little bit in getting started with the power supply and the voltmeter. Uh, coming up next are going to be a couple of videos that talk about the things like the signal generator and the oscilloscope and things like that. So good luck. Have fun. Uh, and I, I can't stress that enough. Have fun. Play around with this thing. It's a really cool device.